Okay, we're the Jerry Ward, Bio3 Training, Internet Authority. So, so Jerry, um, common uh, bodybuilding, I guess, theme. Uh, you have uh, low GI carbs on your off days and uh, on your um, training days on, uh, well, after training, you would have high, high GI carbs. So, you know, for example, people would have, uh, you know, like um, sweet potato yeah. on off days and then, uh, you know, after they train, they may have, uh, you know, white rice or just something with, uh, with a high GI index. So, what do you think about that? I don't believe in that, I really don't. I mean, it's definitely an old school way of thinking. It was kind of like, actually it's like a middle old school. Because it's not super old school, but it's after old school, if that makes any sense, but it's not new school. So you know a lot of, thing, a lot of things now that they didn't know when those concepts were taking place. And I don't know if it's bro science mixed with a little bit of science in it, but things that you're eating now are gonna be working like two or three days from now. So, you know, thinking that, well, I can eat a meal and it's gonna you know, process and be used like this within that hour or two hours or whatever is not necessarily true. Now, does it cause hormonal fluctuations? Yes, and that's what I like to use it for, hormonal fluctuations to get, to manipulate, to get the body to do what you want it to do, but it doesn't necessarily mean the nutrients being used right then and there are the ones you just took in. I could eat a chicken breast on Tuesday, on Friday the protein is still inside, or excuse me, the amino acids, I gotta say this right because those friggin' science wing nuts will jump all over me. The amino acids are still in my body being used in the amino acid pool. So, you know, does it really matter if you have, you know, uh, high glycemic food on your, your off days or your, I don't think it matters at all. Because there's, without a doubt, the day after you train, some people may get an increased metabolism the following day, some people may not. Some people recover faster than others. So it's so individual to the person, but, you know, I tried a carb cycling diet where I did high, medium, and low, and they weren't adjusted towards days off or certain body parts. If it was leg day and you were on low carbs, you had low carbs that day. If it was leg day and you had high carbs, that's the way it went. It just rotated through like that. And I noticed the performance didn't suffer like everybody thinks it would. So just because you had a low carb day doesn't mean that, oh no, you know, I'm gonna you know, have a, a decline in my workload, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, your carbs are low that day. But you still have carbohydrates that are stored in your muscles and your liver from the day before, which was a medium day. And from the day before, which was a high day. So, you know, I don't really know where the concept came from. It's probably one of those things that somebody just common sense makes sense you know what I mean well if you're not training go with a low glycemic if you're training or was it high glycemic well either way yeah high, right? high GI low high GI, GI. Yeah. so like why would you want to use something that boosts up your insulin on your day that you're not doing something why wouldn't you have the high glycemic on the day after your workout which would make more sense to boost insulin right you know which that's a whole other concept in itself uh, so uh, because the uh, you know when you're eating the carbs it doesn't have the instantaneous effect right uh, you're saying it doesn't matter so uh, carbs you know uh, you know have that you eat the day before or whatnot is going to have an effect, uh, you know, on the uh, subsequent days, not immediately. Well, I mean, they could. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're deficient in carbohydrates and you take in carbs, they're going to have an effect. They're going to be stored in the muscles, stored in the liver. Once the liver and the muscles are full, you basically have what's left over that you're going to burn off or you're going to store as body fat. So, you know, how do you know how much you already have in your muscles and your liver? Like, there's no formula that can tell you what that is. So how do you know when to take what carbs? It's all a guessing game. There is no way to do it. And that's the thing is people want to think that, well, I have this, this formula that tells me I need this many carbs to fill up my liver glycogen. I need this many carbs to fill up my muscle glycogen. I need this many carbs for this. You can't do that based on the fact that your body over different days through recovery rates and in energy expenditure have different amounts of carbs at a different time. So how do you really figure out what you're supposed to do? It's all guesswork. I see. So uh, thanks uh, again, Jerry. And we're, this is the guesswork bicep, and we're out.